pretty much. It's been a busy week, hasn't it? Been a busy week for you folks, amen? Anybody been busy this week, or you just kind of been laying around, or been busy? It's been busy, hasn't it? Yeah. Tell you what, it's a busy season. You know, we're moving into, uh, you know, summertime, school's out, a lot of people vacationing, a lot of people planning to do things and go places, and it's just busy. I mean, it's a busy time, and uh, all kinds of uh, different activities and, and sports and, and picnics and, and uh, getaways and little short getaways, long getaways. And uh, I was just talking to Sister Penny out back. was talking about the number of children that's here this morning. She says there's a lot of, a lot of people here. She says, but there's uh, a lot of regular people that are normally here that are on vacation or away. And, and look at the crowd God has still blessed us with today. I mean, it's just a blessing to see so many people coming out to worship God. And I don't mean to sound like I'm surprised. I just want you to know how, how thankful I am because, see, uh, God's gave me a word here that is, uh, that's in my heart today to share. And I'm so encouraged that you are here today to hear the word of God. It's a blessing. I still stand amazed, and some of you people may not, may not get this or understand this because you haven't maybe been here very much, but I still can hardly believe that I'm here. I'm so glad to be. I'm not kidding you. I'm so thankful and so glad to be the minister at Greenview Christian Church. I still sometimes have to kind of go like that to see if it's real. I guess what I'm saying is this. You know how you tell your spouse, you tell your kids, maybe not enough, but you tell them you love them? I love you guys so much. I really do. I'm so thankful for you. I love you. It is such a, and, and I don't say it enough, uh, but I'll promise you, if we're not saying it, I'll promise you I'll live it out, okay? I'll live that love out. Uh, I'm glad you're here. It's good to see all of you. It's been busy, as I said. Uh, I'm noticing there's a lot of help wanted signs around right now. Summertime, you know, a lot of people looking for them summer jobs. I'm not looking for one, by the way. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not looking for a summer job. So if you got something that needs to be painted or something in choir or somewhere else. Uh, but, but <laughs> or a window to be washed or, or any of that stuff, you know, uh, or a vacuuming or anything, you know, all those things. But, uh, but you know, uh, there is, though, there's a lot of places I've noticed that are hiring and a lot of places that are kind of part-timing and there's a lot of busyness and, and, and that's understandable and normal. And we get busy and we forget kind of things, you know. And I don't know if you're like me as, as when we get busy, we don't remember everything. I mean, it's easy for things to slip our mind. If it wasn't for like a calendar book of writing down things, I would really be lost. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? I mean, do you live out of a calendar? If you have an iPad, you've got your calendar full. Or if you still use a notebook or whatever you do. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, it isn't that I have a bad memory either. It's just that it's a good one, but it's just short. I mean, you know, it's just the thing is, is that I, there's so much to remember. And there's nothing wrong with that. But if you want to keep appointments, and if you want to stay prudent, if you want to stay uh, respectful, oh boy, hey, here we go. There we go. It, it, you know, you really, it's important that, that you, you keep a calendar. Because it's so easy to forget. And, and I do. I, I, I try not to forget things. And when I do, I'm hard on myself. How about you? I don't like missing appointments. I like to be, when I tell someone I'm going to be somewhere, I like to be there. I don't want to be the kind of person that says, oh, hey, I'll see you then, and then the time comes and you're not there. You just don't show up. It, it's it, it kind of, to me, I don't want to be disrespectful to people. If I'm ever not there at an appointment, it's because, uh, it's because I obviously didn't do a good job of keeping records or something happened right then that held me up, and you'll be getting a call soon to know that I'm not there for a reason. Uh, you know what I'm talking about, though? How busy? You ever miss something, appointment? Uh, one time I had a premarital counseling, and I remember I had it set up for a while. And it was in my calendar, and, and I only had half a dozen of those with a half a dozen families that month. But, but that one day, I don't know what happened, but for some reason, I forgot. And this man and woman who were looking forward to spending the rest of their life together were excited about meeting with the preacher, and they couldn't wait to meet with me. And they came to the church, and they sat in the foyer, and I didn't show up. So the secretary, she calls me and she says, Brother Claude, she said, uh, so-and-so's here. And automatically, you know what happened. Oh, my gosh. Oh, oh, 
I forgot. I just all just came to come in, you know, come in on me right then that I knew they were there and I couldn't help but think I dropped everything that was going on, which wasn't really that important. I just forgot. And I drove over there the speed limit <laughs> in India and... <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I passed cars and I flew through town and I squealed in the parking lot and I got out and I was like, oh, oh, I'm here. I come in the door and they're like, my gosh, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> but it was to me. You know, we get busy and we forget. We, we lose track. You know, the disciples did that in the Bible. We find it throughout the Bible. I'd like, if you would, this morning, I want to talk to you about sometimes getting distracted a little bit, because we get distracted, especially summertime. Here's one of the things that I like to tell the church at a time like this when summer comes on. Whatever you do, everything you gained through the winter, everything you gained in wisdom and knowledge and Bible study, everything you gained in your studies, don't lose what you gained during the summer because you're so busy doing so many other things. You're distracted and you forget what is good in your life. Don't lose what you've gained. If you're in my Sunday school class, whatever you do, do not lose what God has given you through the summer because you're busy. If you're in this class or in that class or that, don't lose that. Make sure you hold on to it because it's easy to do. And we don't do it on purpose either. We get distracted, we get busy. I'm going to ask you again, you can raise your hands on this and, and it's safe. Anybody in here busy? Some of you lying. <laughs> We're all busy. We got a busy schedule. If you're retired, you're still busy, aren't you? You really are. I hear people all the time that's retired. You know what they tell me? Well, I don't know how I ever did it. I'm busier now than ever. You heard that before? I don't know. How we fill our schedules. We're busy. Well, listen to what happened over here in Mark, the 8th chapter. We're going to read a few verses. I just want to, just want to talk to you about the disciples a moment, and I just want to help you with this busyness time at a season to where there's a lot to be done. Verse 13 is where I'd like to start. Then he left them, Jesus, got back into the boat and crossed to the other side. The disciples had forgotten, <laughs> they had forgotten to bring the bread of all things. Could you imagine? You go with Jesus and you forget the bread? That's almost like my wife forgetting the debit card. <laughs> I bought her a nice birthday gift. I can swing that one. <laughs> okay? It's almost like her forgetting her purse. By the way, how many of you guys like carrying your wife's purse? You know, how many? Al Malakovic, you do not. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, hey, let's go on here, okay? Because I don't like it, but I'll do it anyway. It works. Uh, so the disciples have forgotten to bring the bread except for one loaf they had with them in the boat. Uh, be careful, Jesus warned them. Watch out for the yeast of the Pharisees and that of Herod. They discussed this with one another and said, it is because... We have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them. Now, you know, they just fed thousands of people, you know. They just witnessed this miraculous miracle of feeding. And, and Jesus, I'm sure, is thinking, are you kidding me already? We, we have no bread. Aware of their discussion, Jesus asked them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not see or understand? Are your hearts disheartened? Are your hearts hardened? Do, your, do you have eyes but fail to see? And ears and fail to hear? And don't you remember? Uh, don't you recall when I broke the five loaves for... Get this. Five loaves for five thousand and how many basketfuls of pieces did you pick up think about that don't you remember they answered seven he said unto them you see you know the right answer do you still not understand you know I, I, I recall how many times in life I know the right answer but I still don't understand it. And you know, Jesus is telling his disciples, as they visually seen a miracle, 
They seen God do something powerful, and they still, here's the deal, and they still didn't get it. And I want to tell you, sometimes I'm, I'm much the same way. How about you? Sometimes I find myself knowing and have seen what God has done in people's lives. It's not a secret what God can do, but sometimes it looks like I have no idea the power of God. Sometimes it looks like I'm distracted and confused and I don't understand. You know, back, uh, back in the day, how many of you were alive during the telegraph? <laughs> Wow, everybody's hand, oh, I was. <laughs> no, no. Telegraph was a long time ago. You know, back in the day when the telegraph was actually the fastest method of long, you know, get this. The telegraph was the fastest method of long distance communication. Remember? I mean, well, how? Oh, I'm glad we're not there. I would rather learn the iPhone 5. You know, really, than the telegraph. Uh, but, but, you know, remember, it was the fastest communication line, and, and, and it applied actually towards what they called the Morse Code. And there was a job opening. There was a job opening for a Morse Code operator, which, boy, I don't know why would that be difficult. Uh, someone who could dispatch that. So answering the ad in the newspaper, uh, this young man, he went off to the address uh, that was listed in the paper. And when he arrived, he entered this large and very busy office filled with noise and filled with clatter, just all kinds of clutter and chatter, including the sound of a telegraph in the background, which... And all this noise and all these people speaking and, and these people conversing, obviously, probably about this opening in this job. You ever sat in a group of people that were all wanting the same job? It's interesting. Very interesting. Well, a sign on the receptionist counter instructed, uh, instructed this. It said, applicants to fill out this form and wait until they were summoned to enter the office. The young man, he filled out his form and he sat down, like it said, like he was supposed to, with seven other applicants in the room. The young man stood up, though, all at once, and he crossed the room and he went by the receptionist's desk and he entered the door of the office where the boss was at and he walked right in. Naturally, those other guys, those other applicants, they, they perked up wondering, you know, hey, nobody called him. Where's he going? He stood up and just went on in there and what's going on here? Uh, he's disqualified. That's what they're thinking, you know, he's done. Better chance for me now. Within a few minutes, however, the employer escorted the young man out of the office. He didn't bring him out and throw him out. He escorted the young man out of the office, and he said to the other applicants, he said this, Gentlemen, he said, thank you very much for coming to the job interview today, but the job has been filled. Can you imagine? The job has been filled. The other applicants began grumbling to each other, and one spoke up saying, Wait a minute, hold on! I never even got to come in there. I don't understand. He was the last one that came in. And, and we sat here, and we didn't even get a chance to be interviewed. Yet he got the job. That's not fair. The employer said this, I'm sorry, but all the time that you've been sitting here, the whole time you've been sitting here, the telegraph has been ticking away out the following message in Morse Code. If you understand this message, then you come right in. The job is yours. Jesus Christ, our Father in heaven, has been sending a message to Greenview Christian Church for years. Years and years. And I want to tell you today, it's time to listen up. God's got a plan and a story for the future of this church like we never dreamed before. I'm a believer. He's calling this church to greater things in 2013. I'm a believer that our God loves this church and has a plan for us, and I'm not going to sit around anymore and let the world distract me and let the world take me out of the race and say it can't be done. It's not possible because all things are possible with our God. Amen? All things. 
They're not possible with me. They're not possible with you. But they're possible with our God. I'm so grateful. When I heard that story, get this. A dozen years ago, I've never used it. But boy, God said, hey, you share that one today. And it spoke to me, and I hope it spoke to you. Listen, God's got a plan. None of, none of you, he said, in that room, he said, none of you understood it. This young man said, I understand it, and he got the job. Man, what a, what a blessing. Here's my question today to you, and it's a question to me too. Please don't think that I've got it all figured out. I want you to understand that I'm underneath that authority of God as well, and I'm praying this as well, but my question to me and my question to you is, is our ears attentive to the voice of God? See, that's the deal. Are we attentive to His voice? And there's so many distractions. We're so busy. There's so many things in our life, and it's not wrong to be busy. But please don't get distracted by the world and lose vision and lose faith and lose hope in what God can do here. Because, listen, there's people counting on. Believe it or not, there's people counting on the Holy Spirit that lives in you, that breathes through Greenview Christian Church. There's people that counting on this all the way over in India, all the way over in, uh, all the way over in Haiti, all the way over in China, right here in the community. There's people counting on this, and God's got a plan, but we need to hear it. He's speaking to us. He's not screaming at us. I love that about him. See, I'm a screamer. <laughs> He's uh, a lot of times a still, small, but powerful voice. There's a few things that uh, I think about when this, about this story I just shared with you. First of all, the, the young man, uh, he wasn't the first one in the room. You may be visiting here today, or you may just been here a few months. You might just join the church, and you might be joining today, and you might have been here since 19... Morse code. <laughs> but here's the thing. You didn't have to be first here. God will speak to everybody. He'll speak to all of you. He loves every one of you. He's got a plan for all of us. I want to encourage you that. See, when this man walked in the room and he was last, I'm sure everybody kind of looked to see him come in. He sat down and then everybody began to chatter of why they really were the one for the job. I've got this and I've got that and I've got this experience and I'm dressed a little nicer than pfft, he's not going to get it. You see his shoes? This man walked in and he was in tune. He was listening. And he heard, the job is yours. The job is yours. He didn't sit there. Well, maybe it's not me. Maybe he's talking to someone else. Maybe that's a mistake. The guy got up. He got up and he went. And he went in there. Wow. That speaks to me. He didn't mess around. He didn't second guess. He just went. There are probably men in that room higher qualified. I want to tell you this, there's men in this room higher qualified to preach than me. <laughs> I guarantee you. God just chose me. And I'm thankful. You know, as well as I do, he doesn't always call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Amen. He's waiting to qualify us. He's waiting to qualify you and me to bigger things. I'm not trying to preach some prosperity message. This is the truth. God's Word is powerful, and this is a message He has for you and me. I'm excited about what God's doing. I'm not at all scared, because this is where I'm at in my life. God has put me here to bring the Word, to, to help to seek and save the lost, the community, and He is going to bless this body continually if we continue to hear Him. Let's continue that way. Let's not turn around and let's not do what so many times in churches happens where, where they get a call from God and they go, are you sure it's Him? <laughs> there may have been men in that room better dressed. Maybe there were some comparing themselves. Maybe each one of them were telling each other how they deserved the job more than others. Maybe they were arguing about uh, who was right for, and who was wrong for the position. But while they sat there, the young man just walked right in and got the job. Listen, uh, Satan tried hard. Satan tried hard to keep me 
from doing a lot of things for the kingdom in my life. He's tried to keep me from serving. He's tried to make me feel like you're not worthy. You're not smart enough. You can't do this. Satan has lied and lied and lied. And let me tell you something. Every time I stepped out there and trusted God, God took care of Satan for me. And he does the same thing for you. And that's what he wants to do for the church body here at Greenview. I'm just a believer that he's got great plans for us. Uh, I just believe today that we have to make sure that our vision and our, our ears are attentive to God. The one who will hear the still, small voice of Jesus in this generation today, in 2013, are the ones who are truly going to eliminate distractions. I know you might be in college, you might be uh, new to the workforce, and, and you, 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 it's easy to get distracted, it's easy to put God on the back burner, it's easy to pay your alms once a month, it's easy to give your tithe occasionally, it's easy, I want to tell you something, if you'll put God first in everything you do, you'll see God first in every blessing that comes about, you'll see God work in your life, make sure you never get numb to, to putting God in the forefront of everything you do, everything you do. Honestly, the ones who will hear that still small voice are the ones who will be able to take the distractions out of their life. And I can tell you today, we may not be honest here and show our hands, but in our hearts, I guarantee you, if God said, raise your heart today, if there's distractions in your life, there's not a soul in here that does not have some distractions that keeps them from God. Everyone in here, and somewhere along the line, to be honest with God and honest with ourselves and, and honest with one another, we have to stand up someday and say, you know what, I, I got some distractions, and I can't get rid of them without the power of God in my life. I need to give them to Him, and I need to clean this life up, and I need to get rid of this, and I need to make sure my focus is God only. Because, listen, He is the only way. And don't make that a threat. Make that a wonderful, wonderful gift and promise. He's the best way ever. Amen. And he'll bless your life. He'll bless your walk if you're single, if you're married, if your spouse is passed. He'll bless your life. He's not done. The one who really blocks all the outside influences and concentrates on what God is saying and, and the, the, the clutter and the hubbub and all the other stuff in your life will go away if you just concentrate on him. And, and that's intentional. You have to work at that. That's not something you can just do on Sunday. We've all had people say things to us before, uh, and we'd be daydreaming or something, you know? I remember when I was in school, and that didn't happen very often. But I remember in school, there was this one teacher that just had this gift. And the gift she had was to make me daydream. I mean, she had an impeccable gift. She was just so good, she could send me into a dream. I mean, I'd be staring out the window. It wouldn't matter what she was talking about. She just had this gift. Her voice was, you know, on Snoopy. You know that, that when you answer the phone. <laughs> My dad said, why have you got a C in that class? I said, have you heard her? It's lucky I'm even in there. Are you kidding me? I said, My word. I said, there's no way that subject is that boring. Can't be. She has to work at it. <laughs> but you know what was funny? There's only a couple of us in there daydreaming. <laughs> All them other kids had something wrong with them. <laughs> I don't know if they made it or not. <laughs> So, but when we finally, truly, when we finally, truly get in focus with God, we know it. We know when we're really walking in His way and we're walking in the will. You know, I want to tell you, it's just important that we hear and that we see God well. And I, I just tell you something, I have an uncle that's, he's nearly 90. He's a great old man. I mean, I love him to death. My dad takes care of him. He's just a fabulous old guy. And I love to talk with him and stuff. And, and I take him sometimes to appointments and, and I go out to see him quite often. He told me a while back... <laughs> I was talking to him, and he, he wasn't answering. Because most of the time when you say, hey, Uncle Ray, how you doing? You better have a little bit of time on your hands. Now, he's doing well, honestly, for that age. But pff, he will go through some things. And then he'll tell you, you don't know my troubles. <laughs> he'll tell you, he's got some, evidently. But he's really good. He's really fine. Anyway, we was driving down the road, and I, I just was talking, and he wasn't responding. I'm like, he goes to sleep on me? Am I, am I got the gift of him daydreaming or what? I looked over, and I said, hey, do you hear what I said? 
Oh, he says, well, he said, you didn't know probably. I've been diagnosed where uh, I could only hear half of what's said. <laughs> well, isn't that something? I said, well, <laughs> how do you get that? <laughs> I said, well, I said, uh, I said, well, so what do you mean? He said, well, the doctor said I got 50% of my hearing, you know. And I thought it was strange. I'm like, are you kidding me? You know, here's a guy here that really goes graphic on me with a lot of things on his health, and he tells me that. And I'm like, wow. So I decided to listen a little more to him, and he said something, though. You can get something out about anything. You know what he said, though? He said, so from now on, there might be something a little strange between us. And I said, what is that? He says, I'm going to look at you real close when you speak so I can understand what you're saying. Almost automatically, God said something to me right then. He said, Claude, you know what? You need to just keep your eyes really, really, really close on me. Because right now in your season of life, what I'm saying to you is critical. It's critical for the future, and it's critical for so many people, and it's critical for your life. And I want to say this to you. I just want to give this to the family that I love. You watch closely at the lips of our God as he speaks into your heart's ear because he's got something to say to you. He loves you and he's got something dearly. And it's not that you have bad hearing. It's just that we've got a lot of things around us causing distraction. I've noticed something. In the last year or so, when I'm in a crowd and there's things going on, and if I'm on the phone or I'm trying to talk to someone, the, the noise around me bothers my conversation and my, my discussion. I have a hard time hearing. It's almost like I can't put that outside noise out. And I notice I'm looking more to pick up on the lip movement and seeing what they say. Can I encourage you to, to tune in your ear to God and to get your eyes upon Jesus Christ completely? Make it a practice. It's not just a, a, a once in a while thing. See, God's got big plans for your life, for your family, for your home, for your career, for your future, for your eternity, for the church you worship in. God's got big plans. But here's the thing. When the body collectively comes together and we begin to be attentive, just intentionally attentive to God's eyes, His Word, to His ears, to His voice. See, the Bible says, we know the shepherd's voice. We know. We can hear Him. We know who He is. And we answer Him. We follow it. I want to encourage you to do that. And you might be here today and you might say, Preacher, you've never met me. And you don't, you don't understand what all I go through. You don't, you don't know how it is to get up every day and how hard sometimes it is for me just to get out of bed. And it's not just physical. Sometimes, you know, Preacher, I don't even feel like being here. Sometimes when I get up, you know, I'm just so depressed or I'm just so down. I just don't, I just don't feel like even, even seeing the people I love. And sometimes I just feel like I'm hopeless and I don't have any way to go. And I just don't know what I'm going to do. I just want you to know something today. And it might be words that you've heard over and over. I couldn't give the words good enough to tell you how much God loves you. And how much he desires for you just to say, take control of my life. Lord, take control of my life. Remove me from this sadness. I want to tell you, if you get in a body of Christ, like Greenview Christian Church, God will remove any depression from your life. If you get in a family of love, like this family, God will take away any care that you think that you've got to handle on your own because this family will love you and will bring you out of that together as the body of Christ does. Can I get an amen from the church today? That's what it's all about. You don't have to do this on your own. But one thing you and I do have to do. We have to turn our eyes on Jesus. We've got to give Him our ear. And then we have to open our heart. I look at our hearts, maybe it's childish, as a silhouette. And I don't know what Jesus looks like. I know there's a lot of paintings. But, but I look at Him as a silhouette. And I have put a lot of things in that silhouette before. And I look and it's empty again. And I put some other things and some other distractions, some other things in there, and it's, and it's full a little while, and then it's empty again. But I want to tell you, if you will put, if you'll put the Word of God and the love of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit in there, I'll make you a promise today. I will, I will make you a promise that you will be full for the rest of your life. It will never be empty again. Your void will be filled. That's the God I'm talking about. 
That's the Lord that, that everyone needs. And that's how churches, that's how they grow together healthy. You know, it's so critical that we know that, that God doesn't say, I'm going to bless you, but I'm not going to bless you. See, God's going to bless all. He's going to love us all if we would just allow him to. He's got a blessing for everyone. And here's the deal. He may not give me great things like he has others, but I want to tell you one thing he's gave me. He's gave me peace. A peace that I can't explain. He's gave me grace. A grace that is so big that I have no comprehension, but I'm just glad I got it. He gave me love. He taught me how to love because he showed me love in his expression of giving his son to not only die, but to come off the cross and resurrect so I can have eternal life. He's blessed me. Anybody else feel blessed? God is a blessing. He's a blessing. I, uh, I had a person the other day that told me, uh, I feel hopeless in my life. I don't think I can go on. I don't think there's anything that anyone can do. And what I knew about that person is they'd never give God the chance. They'd never give him a chance to, to do what he wanted to do. They'd never been attentive to him. They'd never listened to him. They had done so many things in life that was good, but they really never give God the opportunity. And, I, and if you're here today and that's where you're at, I just want to help you with that. Listen to this. The chimes of time ring out the news. Another day is through. Someone slipped and fell. Was that someone you? You may have longed for added strength, your courage to renew. Don't be disheartened, for I bring hope to you. It is no secret what God can do. What He's done for others, He'll do for you. With arms wide open, He'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. There is no night, for in His light you'll never walk alone. Always feel at home. Wherever you may roam, no evil power can conquer you while God is on your side. Just take him at his promise, don't run away and hide. It is no secret. done for others he will do for you and with arms wide open he'll pardon you it is no secret what God can do Thumbs wide open, he'll pardon you. It is no secret what God can do. It is no secret what God can do.
We could have just sang that and did an invitation in my heart. About six years ago, things looked a little hopeless, looked a little grim. It looked like maybe ministry is, as I knew it was over. Sometimes when things happen in preachers' lives, sometimes there's not grace as they are in others. And when my beautiful daughter come to us and she said they were going, she was going to have a baby, we weren't ready. My wife took me on a walk in the park. I knew I was in trouble. We don't go on a walk very often. And she set me down and she said, I have something to tell you. And I'll never forget the day that she told me. And I want you to know at that time, I was broken. I thought life was finished in ministry. I was thinking of me and, and I was thinking of God. And my wife and I went to the elders and we sat down with them and explained to them what was going on. And in the past, that eldership had made some terrible decisions and some people in that situation had been moved from ministry. And you know, they embraced us and they wrapped their arms around us and they said, we'll love you through this. And that next Sunday morning during invitation I set a chair right up on the stage and I thought I'd spoke my final sermon and I sat in that chair and I told the congregation what was taking place and my little girl that had got up every night after dinner and come around the table and sat on my knee. I sat in that chair and, and she got up and she came up and she sat on my knee. And everyone in that congregation came down that aisle and they hugged us and loved us and prayed with us. And if I didn't have Elena Mae Reem Howe Jr., that's what I call her today, I certainly wouldn't be as blessed as I am now. It is no secret what God can do. You may feel today like it's hopeless. I want to tell you there's hope in Jesus Christ. There's hope in the family of God. Today you may be hurting. You may be sad. Don't you sit today and not leave here with God's love, with the family of God, with the prayer and the peace and the power to answer his call. Because he has something he wants to say to you. And he has something he wants you to do. Don't you feel like, oh, well, that's a, that's a pretty hard story to share. Listen, if you can't tell the family of God that you love and it loves you, who can you tell? Leave here today. Not the same as you come in. You leave here with your eyes and your ears attentive because God's got big work. It's not really just about a building. It's about a family altar. It's about it's about lost souls. It's about kingdom work. It's so much more than about walls and brick and mortar. It's about three old rusty nails. <laughs> Answer God this morning if you have a need. Don't leave here today. Don't leave here today without telling God and be God in your life. Let's stand just now. We're going to do an invitation. I want you to just... Listen. Listen close. Listen to what God has to say in this invitation for you today. There is hope in Jesus Christ.